Rory here, back with, uh, uh, you know, back down to the XNA um, Studios dev area. I'm um, talking to Frank Savage today. And Frank, what do you do? Who are you? I'm the development manager for the XNA team. Um, my job is to uh, manage all of the developers, the guys that are writing all the magic code that's going to allow uh, you guys to be able to make really great games on both Xbox and uh, Windows. Okay. So, um, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about your history because uh, you've got some posters on the wall that sure. I wanted that I have to cover before we get into the <laughs> nitty gritty of X and A. Just because I grew up with the stuff that you were making. I mean, not with. Well, let's first go to your keychain. Sure. I didn't. I didn't grow up with this stuff. Um, yeah. If well, you guys want to, first of all, you guys are going to be jealous in a few minutes because Frank has about the coolest job in the world. Okay, <laughs> and uh, and. You know, you're going to be wanting to kill him, but he paid his dues. Um, what do yeah, we have here? So as Frank? you can see, I uh, originally started in the coal mines of southeast Ohio. Uh, this is uh, Meg's Mine number 2. Uh, and these little tags uh, that are on my keychain uh, are here because this is what you used to hang up on the outside when you'd pick up your helmet light. And that way uh, they would know what body it is to go look for uh, if something Jeez. bad happened. <laughs> so uh, they'd go to the board, whoever had their tag hanging up, they'd be like, oh, you need to go find them. Uh, so that was... Uh, a little bit different than uh, than the current job. Uh, it's all high voltage electrical engineering as well, so it's a little and, bit different than and, today. And you said you said a minute ago you spent three years underground. Yes. Okay, so when I met Frank, um, the lights were all off in his office. You know, this is the second time I was here. He turned the light on, and it's got this little dimmer on it. And I walk in, <laughs> and he thinks, "Okay, we're gonna have some video shot here." So he's got the thing dimmed to this, you know. Right, and he's so squinting, is, you know. Right, um, yeah, yeah, this, this is really bright for me. <laughs> yeah. So, so Mike is like mole man, you know. And this is this is a whole new experience for him. So, uh, so this is a uh, is the first for you guys out at uh, Channel Nine. This is the first for first for Frank getting to see uh, getting to see light this bright. But yeah, uh, this is the first time I've actually seen my office with the light. <laughs> but pretty cool. So over here on his wall. So first we got the history about his uh, about his his uh, work in the coal mines. But over here, and we got a Wing Commander Three Heart of the Tiger poster. Now I don't know about you, but I was a big Wing Commander fan back when I was, you know, playing a lot of games and stuff. And I still play a lot of games. But uh, but uh, Wing Commander Three was actually one of my favorites. And Frank, what was your involvement there with that? So I was the uh, the director of Wing Commander Three. Uh, Wing Commander was a passion of mine. Uh, as you see on the other side of the wall, there there's a license plate from Illinois that says Wing Commander One on it. Uh, this was before I started to work at Origin Systems on Wing Commander Three. Uh, so as you can see, I was a little bit of you were in that before, yeah. Yeah, on Wing Commander. So uh, getting the job and actually uh, not only just being a, a programmer on Wing Commander Three, which is all I would have hoped for, uh, but to actually lead it and direct it. Yeah. Uh, was just a dream come true. It was the ultimate in doing that. So Chris Roberts went off to Hollywood, did all kinds of uh, filming uh, for all the live action stuff, and I stayed back in Austin and got the game done. Cool. Um, so you you were one of those geeks where when the original Wing Commander came out, you spent all your time pushing everything into expanded memory so you could see the uh, hand with yeah. the flight stick. That's exactly. Right, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> uh, did the uh, so actually went out the day that Wing Commander came out, bought a sound card, uh, bought Wing Commander one. Uh, actually, I'd seen Wing Commander 1 at a j convention called Gen Con in Milwaukee. And uh, after I'd saw Wing Commander 1, I stopped by the software store very nearly every night on the way home from work until it came out. Yeah. Called every friend I had in the world over, said, you've got to see this game, it's unbelievable, and then proceeded for the next year to play Wing Commander 1 every night, <laughs> three hours a night. I think I did that too. Yeah, it was... So atmospheric, you know that game. Yeah. I mean, like the scene where they're where they're scrambling, running down to their fighters exactly. and everything. You know just, that that first ship you have the Hornet, and yeah. I mean, I love that game. That was yeah. such a fun game. It's that was very, good very, stuff. That's what we were trying to capture with Wing Commander Three. We were trying to get back to that root of. You did too, yeah. yeah it, was, did. It, it was more technologically advanced, but still the sure. same atmosphere and the same great stuff. So I have to ask, did you get to meet Mark Hamill at all? I did. Yes. Wow. So he, okay, man, this guy met Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you've you know you've gotten somewhere, uh, I guess, in the game business when you're you're in a, a press show at Universal Studios in uh, Hollywood, and uh, Mark comes in. He's going to get his morning cup of coffee. Yeah, you guys hear that? Mark. Coffee. Yeah, Mark, Mark came in. Pats me on the back and says, "Hey, how's it going, Frank?" And I'm like, "Oh, pretty good, Mark." And then you just. Just, Dude! Oh, wow. oh my God! <laughs> so he touched you. He did. Okay. Well, here. Well, so yeah. There. There. You go. Okay. So, so I touched Frank. So that's right. So through Frank, I have touched Luke Skywalker. That's right. Or Mark Hamill, or, as he probably yes. likes to be called right. um, during the day um, and yeah. night too, I would imagine. Okay. So that's cool. Did you also work on Strike Commander? Yes, I was. Uh, so I started at Origin Systems in September of '91. Uh, that poster was made actually about two weeks before I actually moved down to Austin, but I had already accepted the job. So my name is on the poster. Uh, which is very, very cool, um, and I wasn't expecting to get names on anything by that point, because I haven't actually done anything on the game yet, other than accept a job. 
Um, but that one was uh, that one was much harder than Wing Commander Three. Yeah, uh, we were doing technology that was significantly beyond what a processor at that time could do in terms of texture mapping. Well, that's the way Origin sharing. was, though. the 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 Absolutely. game The joke going around was Origin is time to buy a new game. You know, yeah. every single time that's a new right. Origin game came out. Was, right. Didn't that come out around the same time as Privateer as yeah. well? Yeah, it was right yeah. around that same time. Yeah, I remember that. That was when I had a 3D6 SX16 with one mega RAM, and you guys were pushing my machine a little too hard. Yeah. You eventually just caught on fire, vaporized, and yeah. uh, yeah. I yeah. swept the ashes up, and yeah. <laughs> that was the end of it. People but. used to go shopping with the SKU labels on Origin <laughs> games at CompUSA. <laughs> they'd walk into CompUSA, they'd pick up a new Origin game, they'd walk over to the guy, all right, what's this? Do I, I, do I have that at home? Do I need to buy a new computer or whatever? So, so you're used to doing stuff that kind of goes to the limits then and doing really exciting things, which brings us to XNA. Sure. Um, so before uh, we head over to XNA, let's show people the experience, just because... Um, you know, I walked into Frank's office here, and I got treated to a pretty cool site. I don't know how many other people at Microsoft have one of these sitting on their desk, but this is um, this is a Samsung uh, HD TV here running at 1080p. All right, so this is like super duper, duper 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 high def. Um, and uh, I don't know about the rest of you out there who own Xbox 360s, but I didn't even know they could do 1080p. And and you're saying they can do them with what the fall drop is that what? Uh... That's correct. There will be an update to the fall flash on Xbox 360 uh, that will allow you to change your console display settings in the HD TV screen to one beyond 1080i or 1080p. And there it is, 1080p. Just to show you, so that's the real thing. This is the real experience. He's actually going through it right now, and uh, yep. this is very cool. So. Uh, so what you're going to show us now is a game that um, is is going to be shipping with uh, XNA Studio. Is that right? It's uh, one of yes. the so one it's, of one of the, kits. it's one of the starter kits. Um, there's a starter kit that uh, um, a lot of our fans have already uh, downloaded and played with in the betas uh, called Space War. This is another starter kit that will be coming um, onto uh, onto the XNA platform here. Uh, sometime after launch, we're not exactly sure how long yet. It's still in the very alpha stage, so you're getting a very very sneak preview here. Um, but this is the experience of actually playing and launching on Xbox 360. So we actually have an XNA game launcher here. Um, you can actually then launch that exactly the same way you would uh, an Xbox Live Arcade game or something like that. And there, uh, for the first time probably to the mass world, is what XNA game launcher looks like. Uh, this is still the old XNA branding, so there's new logos and stuff like that coming to the screen that are still uh, a little bit classified, so you can't quite show everything yet. Um, so the cool part about this is I can actually uh, connect to my computer um, using my retail Xbox and this will bring up a uh, thing. We go and we verify that you have an Xbox Live connection and then after we verify the Live the subscription that you've uh, purchased for this, um, we go ahead and are now waiting for a computer connection. So if you go over to the PC, um, this is Microsoft Visual C Sharp Express Edition here and um, we can go ahead and load up um, so we'll go ahead and load up the game we're going to demo. That would probably be fun. Okay, so uh, so over there you actually have XNA Studio up and running with code in the window here. I'm going to come around to your other side so okay. I can get a view of that. Side so okay. I can get a view of that. So this is actual real live code here. Yes. Um, and you're going to build this and then send it over to the Xbox and then play the game. Is that right? Correct. So okay. just, again, standard. So we see that the build is started launch. and the deployment is started. So we're actually copying files over to the Xbox. You can see that the Xbox has the uh, uh, file that is currently being deployed displayed on it as well. So you get an idea that as Windows is showing you I'm deploying something, the Xbox is confirming yes, I, I see it and it's coming. Um, it takes a, a fair amount of time to deploy all this stuff. This game is about uh, 100 megabytes in size and we're doing it file by file to the Xbox. And what kind of connection is it? Uh, it's standard Ethernet. So okay. if you've got uh, you know 100 megabit uh, Ethernet connection, uh, unfortunately the XNA stuff does not support wireless um, for a number of different reasons. Probably the most, um, probably the biggest reason why we don't is just the bandwidth. Uh, we yeah. want to be able to push stuff to the Xbox as fast as possible, and frankly as reliably as possible. With uh, with the wireless stuff, if you've got any noise going on, you're in the middle of a deploy like this and uh, your wife turns on the microwave, which happens to me fairly regularly, <laughs> um, suddenly your deploy may or may not have succeeded. You get to deploy all these files again. As you can see, this is not a, this is not a five second process. Yeah, it, it actually takes, takes a, little a while, while to get these over there. The cool part is we have an incremental deploy. So once you've deployed these to the Xbox 360, you actually don't have to deploy them again. Uh, it'll automatically check the files that are there, make sure that if nothing has changed, we don't actually send it two, three, four times. 
Because if you had to do this every single time, I think people might uh, be a little <coughs> upset with us. Uh, I certainly. Well, I tell you 